Hello there and welcome ACCA Financial Management students. Today in this video, I'm going to help you pass your upcoming exam. My name is Steve Willis. We're going to cover weighted average cost of capital. We're going to look at the capital asset pricing model, internal rate of return. We're going to go through the tricky past exam question, CORFE, from the March-June 2019 exam. So before you go on with the video, download that question. It's The link is below. It's also right here. Try the question at home, then continue watching the video. Okay, you guys, let's get started. You've read the question. You have found the important information. You've highlighted that important information, or maybe you've taken some notes in the notepad. Let's make a template or a pro forma first. Now, this will look nothing like the model answer in the book, but that's not a problem. We're in the spreadsheet, not a word processor. Every past exam question for weighted average cost of capital has worked for me in this template. So the first column will be the capital structure. Second column, everybody, will be the market value of each element of our capital structure. Next column will be the cost of capital. Next column will be that market value multiplied by the cost of capital. Guys, and in the final column, we can then calculate that weighted average cost of capital. So know this template. And look at this, a little messy, we can double click on the column separators to auto resize the columns that we need. Okay, there are no marks for formatting, so don't spend a lot of time making your spreadsheet pretty. But I will do a little bit of basic formatting here just so it's easier on my eye. I will capitalize and maybe center those column headings, okay? And in the question, we looked at the statement of financial position, and what did we see? We see ordinary shares. We saw the 6% pref shares. We saw the 8% loan notes. And then we saw the bank loan. Okay, that's the first step. Identify and list those out, okay? Identify, list those out. Okay, I'm going to do the market values. And we know the f easiest one will be to pick the, 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 the banknote out because the market value will be equal to the book value there as it's a, not a tradable um, security. So we put a five there. Okay. Ah, there we go, collecting easy marks first. Now, if we look in the question, what do we see? We see 15 million shares, 15 million book value at $1 par value per share. That means we have right 15 million shares, so that's equal to 15 multiplied by that X div share price, which they said was 6.10. Okay, there we go. Next step, the preference shares. We see that there are $6 million in the statement of financial position, but we see par value 0 0.75. So now we can get right the actual number of preference shares. Okay, multiplied by that market price of 0 0.64 or 64 cents. Okay, now the 8% bonds, we see that there's $8 in book value, 8 million in book value, and we see that they are trading at 103.5 multiplied by the par value. Okay, so essentially 1.035. Guys, there we go. We have made easy work of the market values. Let's move now to the cost of capital for each item. Okay, easiest will be the ordinary shares, and we see the usual suspects that we need 
for a cap M calculation. So we can just open up an equal sign and do we see the risk-free rate? Yes, we do, 3.5%, so that's a 0 0.035. Plus, do we have an equity beta? Yes, we do, 1.25, so we have a share that's riskier than the, the index. Okay, open up a bracket, we'll multiply that by the risk premium, which is given to us which is 6.8%, so that's a 0 0.068. Right there. Let's move on to the cost of capital for the 6% preference shares. And if you remember, a preference share pays a dividend into perpetuity, forever. So we'll use the concept of the present value of a perpetuity to find the cost of equity. If you remember, that formula is equal to the annual cash flow divided by the interest rate at which we reinvest. We can then use that idea to substitute some things. The cash flow would be that annual dividend payment. The present value would be the today's price. So we could then isolate the denominator to get the cost of equity. So that's simply going to be the 0 0.06, that's the interest, not excuse me, the dividend rate that pay that they pay, multiplied by the 0 0.75, that's the nominal value of the preference shares, divided by the 0 0.64, which is the market value that gives us the cost of equity for the preference share, 7%. Now, let us do the cost of debt for the loan notes. Now, before I do that, let's do a quick cleanup here. There are no marks for formatting, but it's starting to look a little, it's not looking so nice on my eye, a little cluttered. So I'm gonna come here and just do a little light formatting. And cost of capital we express in percentage. So we can do that to one decimal place is fine. Look at that. Looks much nicer. Now I'm going to have so much fun using the IRR function for this, everybody. So check this out. I'll come down here. Let's make a little working. And that can be IRR. And I'll do this quickly. We can do a year. We can do a column for cash flow and we know we've got year zero plus five more years year zero year one year two year three year four year five everyone and we know the the market value is essentially the cash flow in year zero what do we have to pay to buy the future cash flows and that would be equal to the zero negative one zero 3.5, that's the price for $100 worth of bond. Every year, the company is paying that interest minus the tax shield. So that's going to be $8 interest on $100 of bond multiplied by 1 minus 20%. Okay, now I can drag that down. Not copy down, grab that little black box, pull it down. Okay, those are my cash flows. Now they say in the question that at the end of five years, the redemption has a 10% premium. So we get the interest payment, okay, plus $100 times 1.1. So I can just do that mental math. That will be $110. Now I'm mixing my multiplication and addition. So let me just add a couple of more brackets for safety to preserve the order of operations. Look at that. Now, all I have to do, friends, I'm gonna come here to my loan note interest, loan note cost of, of debt, I'm going to do equal the IRR function. All I have to do, guys, is grab this range of cells and voila, I will get the cost of debt, 
Isn't that super cool? It's a little bit different than what you might see in the book because we are using the function. It will be more precise than the way they do it in the book. And we save so much time here. Guys, we are not given a cost of debt for the bank loan. We do not know the interest rate. So there's nothing we can do except set it equal to what we have. So we can set it equal, okay, to this one and make a note, okay? And just put a little asterisk here. I will come down here and just make a quick note. I use the cost of debt as a proxy for the interest rate of the loan. Guys, you stating my assumptions, covering all of my bases. I can come back here. Okay, now we've done the, the difficult part. So now the rest of this is just so much fun. I will multiply the market value times the cost. I get all of this. And I want to drag that down, right? Copy. Okay, that's looking a little messy. Once again, let us format okay, that range of cells. If we put an underline there by doing control U, that'll let the user of the spreadsheet see that we will put it sum below that, that is equal to the sum, everybody of the market values. Okay, now I can copy paste that preserving relative cell addressing, I get the total of that column. Let's put a control U under that one. And guys, weighted average cost of capital, drum roll please, that will be equal to the cell E8, okay, the market values, multiple, the weighted average of the market value, right, multiplied by the cost of capital over the total market value. And again, we like to express that as what? As a percent. And ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, we've completed a difficult question in record time using the power of the spreadsheet. Guys, make sure you can do this question. Make sure you can do the IRR function. Good luck in your exams.